WoW Classic's Lunar Festival is a time of celebrating ancestry and the triumph over an ancient evil which was defeated many thousands of years ago, according to the game's lore. The event parallels the real-world Chinese New Year and typically corresponds with the date that that holiday falls on. Generally, the Lunar Festival will occur anywhere from late January to early March. This year, 2021, the holiday lasts from February 5th through February 19th. The holiday is celebrated in every major city as well as Moonglade. You can also find the Lunar Festival Elders scattered throughout the many zones of Azeroth, but we'll talk more about those later. Extra celebrations occur in Stormwind, Thunderbluff, Booty Bay, and Moonglade on the date of the actual Lunar New Year, which is February 12th this year, and on the last day of the festival, February 18th in 2021, Moonglade hosts a final fireworks show over Lake Eluna Ra with additional lanterns spawning around the lake as well. This guide is filmed from an Alliance perspective, but there will still be Horde-specific information I'll be sure to mention. Overall, the holiday experience will still be extremely similar for either faction you're playing on. With that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the quests and features the Lunar Festival brings. As far as questing goes, there are only a few notable ones for this holiday, but you can complete most of them on any level character. The first quest you'll want to get can be started by speaking with a Lunar Festival Emissary for Alliance or Lunar Festival Herald for Horde. These NPCs can be found near a bank in any of the major cities. Like always, I'll be sure to put coordinates for these NPCs in the description below if you're working with a map add-on. The Emissary offers you a quest called the Lunar Festival and will direct you to the hub of Lunar Festival celebrations in whatever city you're in. For Alliance players in Darnassus, this is the Cenarian Enclave, in Ironforge, this is in the Mystic Ward, and in Stormwind, this is in the Park. For Horde players in Orgrimmar, the hub is in the Valley of Wisdom, in Undercity, it will be near the entrance, and in Thunderbluff, it'll be at the Elder Rise. Complete this quest by speaking with a Lunar Festival Harbinger, and you'll be rewarded with 5 Cenarian Circle reputation. The Harbinger will give you a follow-up quest called Lunar Fireworks, which requires you to purchase and launch 8 Lunar Fireworks and 2 Cluster Fireworks from the Lunar Festival vendor nearby. The Fireworks will only launch if there are launchers nearby, so make sure to stay in the area to complete the quest. There are recipes for firework launchers that engineers can build as well, so technically the quest can be completed anywhere as long as you have access to those. Stand near a launcher and right-click the rockets until you've completed the quest objectives. Speak with the Harbinger again to complete the quest, and you'll receive a Lunar Festival invitation as well as 50 reputation with the Cenarian Circle. The Harbinger will offer you the third quest in the series, Validar Star Song, and request you to speak to a Night Elf of the same name in Moonglade. Before you leave, you might as well talk to the local Elder and grab a Coin of Ancestry and 50 reputation towards each of the races on your faction. The Lunar Festival invitation can be used within the Greater Moonlight Beams seen in the Festival Hubs and will teleport you directly to Moonglade. If you ever lose this invitation or the duration runs out on it, just speak to any Lunar Festival Harbinger to grab another one. You can also use the invitation at the Greater Moonlight locations within Moonglade to teleport back to any capital city of your choice. Just look for whatever NPCs are surrounding that beam of light to teleport to that race's particular city. This doesn't work for teleporting into enemy faction cities, however. Validar Star Song can be found in the eastern part of Nighthaven, which is a village just to the north of the location you teleport into in Moonglade. Turning in the quest to him yields some XP and ends the brief Lunar New Year quest chain. Validar has a host of other quests to offer you though. Many of them are rewards for Coins of Ancestry. Coins of Ancestry can be obtained by speaking to the many elders throughout Azeroth. There are 24 elders in Kalimdor, 20 elders in the Eastern Kingdoms, and 6 elders inside various dungeons. I'll put up a list on the screen and in the description of all the different elders and their various locations. In the description you'll also find this map by reddit user Mexi that lays out the most efficient path to speak with all the elders for alliance players. I haven't found a specific map for horde players, but I'm sure you can reference this same one and make minor adjustments to fit into the horde faction. Each elder you speak to grants you 50 reputation for your specific faction, a coin of ancestry, and mails you a lucky red envelope in the mail a few hours after speaking with them. It will take some time if you want to visit all of them, but there's no specific reward for doing so. Even though some elders may be in enemy villages or cities, you can still speak with them if you are part of the opposite faction. Some are clearly more dangerous to reach than others, but it's a great way to discover unexplored places you still may have on your world map. 
The lucky red letters you receive in the mail will contain an Elder's Moonstone, which summons a ring of light on the ground for three minutes, or a lucky rocket cluster, which launches blue and white fireworks and gives you a buff for plus 250 health for 30 minutes. If you speak with all 50 elders, you'll end up with 2500 reputation gained with each race in your faction, which is a pretty substantial boost. Before you head out to start speaking to elders, I'd be sure to grab the non-druid Moonglade flight paths while you're still in the zone, as it can be a bit precarious to enter and exit Moonglade on foot, and the Lunar Festival invitation teleport ability won't work once the holiday is over. Alliance can find Hippogriff Master Sindrail in Southern Moonglade to the right of a small pond, and Horde can find Wind Rider Master Faustron in the southwestern corner, just to the left of the path. In addition to coin reward quests, Validar also offers the most exciting quest for the Lunar Festival called Elune's Blessing, which requires you to be level 40 to start and needs a raid group of at least 10 geared level 60 players. He asks you to summon and defeat the two-headed wolf-like demon Omen, who will emerge from Lake Elune Ra near the Stormrage Barrow Dens after hearing launches of several cluster fireworks. Who is Omen and what does he have to do with the Lunar Festival holiday? The old World of Warcraft website event page gives us some insight. The Lunar Festival is a time of celebration. The peoples of Azeroth celebrate their triumph of many thousands of years ago when an alliance of good races, Night Elves, Tauren, and Earthen, a proto-dwarven race, defeated a terrible evil. It is also a time of remembrance for the valor and wisdom of that ancient age. The demigod Omen was a being of great strength and knowledge. Blessed by Elun, the moon goddess, Omen wandered primordial Kalimdor guiding hunters and gatherers and offering luck and advice to all he met. When the Burning Legion launched their attack, Omen allied with Azeroth's defenders. He fought bravely, but after many battles, his wounds from demonic forces plunged Omen into a deep, dreaming sleep, where fell-inspired nightmares slowly consumed him. When he finally awoke, centuries later, he had fallen to madness. The transformed Omen rampaged, no longer a creature of wisdom, but still possessing the strength of Elune's blessing, he tore through the land, killing and devouring. Terror rode before him, and death trailed in his wake. Omen's spree of horror ended when a coterie of ancient heroes gathered in the village of Nighthaven and faced the beast. They called down the moon's wrath, and Omen, blinded and stunned by the power of the moon goddess, fled into the deep waters of Lake Elune Ra. That day marked the end of his rampage and symbolized a new beginning for the people of Azeroth and the followers of Elune. Today, the Lunar Festival is held by the Druids of Nighthaven. Both the Horde and Alliance are welcome to celebrate and shoot fireworks, a symbol of Elune's power. Ancient heroes of the past also appear throughout the land, offering gifts to those who find and honor them. It is a time of happiness and fortune and celebration, but it has a deeper motive as well. Omen, defeated so many centuries ago, yet remains in Lake Elune Ra. Although driven insane by the Burning Legion, the demigod still possesses Elune's blessing and is, hence, immortal. During the Lunar Festival, he stirs, and heroes of the land are called to defeat him once again. I managed to get together a pickup group of 24 level 60s and my level 56 Night Elf Hunter, and we headed out to defeat Omen. Make sure your group has a couple stacks of cluster fireworks for the summon. Validar says it requires nearly three dozen rockets, so I don't know if that's a specific number or if it slightly varies, but you're going to be spamming cluster fireworks nonetheless. In Southern Moonglade, near the Stormrage Barrow Dens, you can find two cluster firework launchers near the lake that will get Omen's attention. At first, some minions of Omen will spawn. These are level 59 to 60 mobs with the appearance of ghostly wolves. Sadly, they are considered demons and not beasts, so they aren't tameable as hunter pets. Generally, these adds won't bother you too much when fighting Omen, especially if you clear some before he spawns, but it's useful to know that they're around. After a while, Omen will emerge from the lake and you can begin the fight. It's a pretty straightforward encounter, but he has an AoE spell similar to Blizzard that players should try to avoid. With roughly 25 level 60s, it took us about 3 minutes total to slay Omen from start to finish. If you'd like to see the full boss battle unedited and without commentary, I posted another video on my channel of this fight. When Omen dies, a beam of moonlight will shine on his corpse. Be sure to stand in the light to gain Elune's blessing, which completes your quest objective and gives you a 10% increase to all stats for one hour. Technically, you don't have to be part of the kill to get this buff and complete the quest, you just need to stand in the moonlight. So if you're a lower level or on the opposite faction of the team that killed Omen, you still have a chance at finishing the quest. 
Head back to Validar Starsong and Nighthaven to turn in the quest, and you'll receive 90 silver, 6600 experience, and 100 rep with the Cenarian Circle. You'll also obtain a Lunar Festival Fireworks Pack, Solid Stones, and a Loon's Lantern, which uses Solid Stones as a reagent to create an Loon Stone, which summons a Ring of Light for 3 minutes, just like the Elder Stones obtained from Lucky Red Letters. The Lunar Festival Fireworks Pack also includes a few different colored rockets not available for purchase anywhere else. If you want to spend your coins of Ancestry, you can buy Festival Dumplings which boost your health and mana by 4%, which is great, especially for higher levels. You can also spend 5 coins to buy different colors of Lunar Dresses or Lunar Pantsuits, but one of the best rewards is a Loon's Candle. Getting this reward requires you to be level 10 or higher, and has 88 charges you can use to shoot a firework at any target. This doesn't cause any damage, but it's a really cool effect that can't be obtained anywhere else in the game. You can also speak with nearby vendor Ferial Starsong, who sells tailoring and engineering recipes for different rockets, firework launchers, and festival dresses and suits. Lunar Festival vendors back in the major cities or at the main festival grounds in Moonglade, in addition to rockets, also offer Moonglow for 15 copper, which is an alcoholic beverage that provides a temporary sparkling glow around your character. They also sell festival firecrackers, which will explode after being thrown on the ground. And that wraps up all the features of the Lunar Festival holiday in World of Warcraft Classic. I'll never forget stumbling into the mystic ward of Ironforge during the first month I got Vanilla WoW back in 2006 and discovering what the holiday was all about. So this event always brings back some great nostalgic memories for me. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the fun cosmetic items and different things to do during the event. As always, don't forget to like the video, hit the sub button, hit the bell button, and leave a comment letting me know your thoughts or your favorite Lunar Festival memories. I've still got lots of classic WoW footage yet to be released, so stay tuned to the channel over the next couple months to be the first to see when that comes out. Till next time.